Okay class, today we're talking about valve wiring and timers. So behind me you see some automation occurring. That automation is occurring hands off other than me first wiring and setting the timers. But this automation is pretty necessary for watering efficiency. Uh, if you have the time to hand water everything, that can be pretty efficient, but in most cases we do not. So as we've learned a knowledge of water needs, the type of system they use, and the plants being watered, and then combined with our climate uh, and evapotranspiration can really help us to set a good uh, automated watering system. And so from small residential settings up to decent sized commercial settings, I will show you some of what's involved in valve wiring and the importance of uh, setting up timers. All right, let's take a look. In a small commercial setting or a residential setting, you'll oftentimes see a valve box about this size. Uh, once you open the valve box, oftentimes a, a tool is required because there's some tabs on the valve box. But this can be daunting and confusing for uh, folks. And what you see in the setting is a lineup of valves uh, attached to a valve manifold. And so each one of these valves has the ability to be either turned on manually by turning the solenoid, but these are electric valves. These are meant for automation. And so to make that happen, you track back to your solenoid. Your solenoid has two wires coming out of it. I'll go to a, a different setting to show you um, how to wire these. But this is why it can become kind of daunting. You see how many wires I have? Um, different colored wires connecting all of these valves. So it takes some know-how, it takes some planning and coordination. Uh, also, <laughs> you have to be careful, there could be anything living in these valve boxes. Okay, we're in the greenhouse now, and uh, here I have an exposed valve manifold might be easier to get at and to look at. Uh, unfortunately, like I talk about in class, you want to plan ahead, uh, you want to plan for expansion. Uh, my water management class over the last uh, uh, half a dozen years or so, each year has been tasked with doing uh, uh, an irrigation project. And so part of the downfall to that, that's an advantage for student learning hands-on, the downfall to that is we plan for one year. And then the next year it's kind of uh, news to me that we're going to do that again. And so in this case students have added valves every year. This isn't an ideal setup, so don't commit this to memory. This is a get it done setup done in class. However, this valve manifold is exposed and I want to show you just a little bit about that. So, I was showing you that every valve has a solenoid. You want to make sure you turn off your clock and make sure you turn off your water when working with this because this is a main line leading to each valve. And so this valve is stopping mainline water water is only released after I click the solenoid. You heard the water just come on to this table. And if I shut it off, thank you, it went off. So that's a manual way of doing it. Again, this is an electric valve that was built not to be manual, but to be a pulse of electricity to pop a plunger in the solenoid that allows the water to flow through. So again, turning off your timer, turning off your water is critical when working with these valves. So a lot of people get confused. From the solenoid, there are two wires. Those two wires coming out, it doesn't matter. One is going to be hot, one is going to be ground. So one will be a white and you get to choose. And so if I follow this wire down, let me find an easier one. If I fo follow these two wires down, we come to two wire nuts here. One is a white wire, one is a red wire, so this is separated. And this is from the uh, low gauge sprinkler wire I have leading to my timer. And so this wire, coated wire, is for direct burial outside. We're using it inside and it's protected um, here in the greenhouse and no water can get to it. These wire nuts cover the connection and so I use this red as a code to allow me to know that this valve is controlled by the red wire and then each one has a common wire and we'll track that back to the controller and look at that. So I choose two, I choose these two, I put one to the common, one to the other colored wire and then I have a wire leading to, and you see this is not just one wire, and they make these coded in multiple strand wires which I'll show you uh, later. We're following this back to the timer. 
And so now here in this timer, uh, you can see right now it's 7.40 a.m. When I, and this, this timer is on, so I'm not going to do any crazy wiring. I would turn it off first, but most timers, and this again, this is an Orbit, very residential, butt locking uh, case. And this is an indoor type timer where water's not going to get on this, um, so it's not completely waterproof. Behind here, we open this up, and here's where it gets a little confusing. So this can station up to nine different zones, so one through nine, and those are numbered there. There's a place for the common, which is the white wire, and so you can see our commons coming from the valves come to the common, and then each color, and again I showed you red, we have multiple red wires in here, so I actually have to um, you know, functionally track it down, but they make these wires in different colors in a bundle so that you can source your colors to be different. I'll show you again an example of that. So one white goes to the common, in this case we have multiple individual white wires, so we wired those together and put them to the common, and then one each to these. This kind of residential setup, you just push the tab up and you just shove your stripped end of your wire up into there and it holds it with a locking mechanism. Okay, now we're actually looking at the timer. These are all very different and can be confusing and daunting. These residential ones or small commercial ones are pretty easy because they have a dial that tells you um, what each thing is happening um, and, and how to program that. And the instructions are pretty straightforward. I'll just give you the basics real quick. If we don't want to be watering, uh, we put the dial to off. Auto watering is whatever program I have preset in here it'll start the function. Setting the clock, setting the date, setting the start times. And for in this case, we have a start time that comes in at nine o'clock. If I had multiple start times, like here, this comes on also at two o'clock, and then I don't have a start time for the third one or for the fourth one. So for each program, and in this case, we have program A, B, and C, A, B, and see each time I push the program button I can have up to four start times for each program so as you thought about uh, irrigation you can take one zone so for instance hard to do one-handed zone one could come on potentially on three different programs with four different start times we could potentially have I'll turn it on manually here. Number one, which is the propagation table. So if I go to auto, if I push enter manual, it's gonna show station one just came on for one minute. I turn it off, okay. So you can have that many start times. Then your run times, each station. So I already showed you propagation table one is zone one and that only comes on for one minute because it comes on frequently throughout the day. As I go to number two, it comes on for five minutes because it is only coming on twice a day. But I can program these minutes up to 240 minutes on each start time. All right, how often? In this case, I have this coming on every day, so there's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you can plus those on or minus those off budget is at a hundred percent. I don't like to fuss with the budget very much because we really need to have control of duration and frequency. Changing this percentage if you were watering an outside lawn situation or outside trees, you could just say, hey, it's, it's starting to cool down, it's fall, I could change this to 80 percent. Here's another thing that's important to do. If there's a tendency for your wire nuts that you wire your two uh, wires together to get wet or in an outside situation, you can slip the wire nut into this thing called a grease cap. This grease cap uh, keeps water from penetrating and corroding that um, connection. Irrigation controllers come in many different styles and name brands. Fortunately, they most of them come with good instructions. This is a rain dial, more of a commercial grade rain dial system. This system has a dial as well with 1 through 12 valves to schedule run times. It has the days on the side to set your schedule and has three start times. And then it has a simple run 
or offset programs. It's a pretty good um, system to use. It uses plus and minuses to change the times in here. So, and it works pretty quick. One of the, the benefits for this is when you're programming in minutes, you can hold it down and really zoom up to a decent amount. This goes up to hours as well, whereas the other timer I showed you only goes up to 240 minutes. In our arid environment with drip systems, this hours of operation is a, is a good benefit. I'm gonna turn this back to off so that it's not uh, taking into account what I just fal falsely programmed and Oh, sorry, off this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this timer. That is a hardy rain dial. Hunter makes a timer that's uh, a pretty good one. Also, I wanted to show you here uh, the importance of automation. So this uh, tomato bay, each bag gets water from a micro drip sprayer. Can you imagine the labor intensity of, there's five rows of these, of um, hand watering each one of these? You would. All of your money would go to, and all your time would go to watering like that. So we have a uh, Sterling 8 uh, greenhouse controller. It's made by Superior Controls. This one is even more complicated because of the, the six program opportunity here. If I was to pull back this, unthread it, you would see the valve wiring opportunities for each valve. This is more difficult because you have to punch in code, number codes to, to control your timing. And so right now we have it on auto. The neat thing with this controller is the instructions are right there attached to it. And so the very first thing you do if you want to put in a new program, it has an erasing existing code. So you put in this code 1379 and enter, which seems a little more confusing than other controllers. But if you follow set step one, set current time, set current day, set water day, set watering duration, set cycle start times, set automatic operation. And then you can turn it on manual, like if I want to turn on zone one, I turn it to manual, I push zone one, and then I'm going to push manual on and off. The program is now running. So we can go here, we can verify, you see the water running, I see the dosatrons clicking, that means irrigation is um, being, nutrient is being injected. Okay, here we are looking in a valve box uh, near our um, orchard setup. Uh, we have two valves in here, two electric valves with solenoids. This knob is a flow control so you can turn the water um, up or down. Um, so here, when I look at this, this wiring, this right here is a one, two, three, four, five strand wire. Each wire inside is a different, I'm sorry, it's a four strand with one common. So I can control up the four valves. I have a blue wire, I have a brown wire, a green wire, and a red wire, and then the common wire. And so as you can see, this white common is wired to both valves. So two wires are coming up from the valves from the solenoid, and they're wired together. In this case, they just put a wire nut I should say they. I put a wire nut with uh, a little electrical tape across the top to hold it. We were practicing our wiring skills so we didn't put a grease cap over this because we take this on and off all the time. And then the other two valves are assigned a color. So we gave this one a green so this leads to one valve and we gave this one a red that leads to another valve. Now when I track this wire all the way down, it's direct berry wire, it goes back through the ground, it actually goes back to the road, comes around the road, there's a sleeve underneath, it goes back through the pot in pot area past the organic garden, goes up along the side of the greenhouse and into the controller I just showed you. That direct burial wire has to be pretty tough and not get uh, eaten through by gophers or anything. And no pinches, no kinks, no people cutting through it because if it does, then I have to run a wire all the way back here. And so back at that timer, then I can control the times that a pulse of electricity comes back and tells this valve to come on on the correct schedule. So here's a brand new valve just outside the box. Um, 
This is a Orbitz valve, gives all the specifications. This is just something I picked up at local box store. This is a three quarter inch inline valve. So the this is male thread, I'm sorry, this is a female thread three quarter inch valve. Um, it has the screws on the top so you can take the top off, clean the diaphragm. Here is the actual solenoid and I should be able to show you the little plunging device here that makes the valve go on and off. And then here is the bundle of the two strands of wire coming from the top of the solenoid. And they do something on these homeowner valves um, where they it's like pre-stripped and so I can just pull this off with my finger. So I'm going to choose one to be hot, one to be uh, common. And now here is my coated um, direct burial low voltage irrigation wire and so you can see here I have a red, brown, blue and green so that's a four you can control up to four valves with this the white is the common and what I did was with the wire strippers I pre stripped back this green one and so I'm gonna connect the green and one from the valve I'm just gonna twist those I put a wire nut on them twist that put a grease cap if it's gonna need covering outside and then I need to pre strip the white and connect this one to the white. Twist it up, protect it, and there you go. This valve now will fire when electricity comes to a correctly controlled timer.